Hey everyone, still got the Covies, but I figured I'd make a video anyways because I'm addicted. So today we're going to be talking about creating meta tags for our Rails app. Now, what these meta tags are, I have a little helper example here for us. Um, this website sort of shows you and breaks down how they work. Basically, meta tags are useful for the actual title that gets displayed when your link gets shared, as you can see right here. The description that gets shown underneath that link in the preview as well as the image and all of that other stuff. Now, one thing you have to realize is because these run through multiple different uh, social media websites, they might not all implement the same protocol. For example, Twitter and Facebook both have their own solution for the link previews. So if I click on generate, it's going to give me the meta tags for the title and description. And then it's going to give me the open graph version, which is for Facebook and then the Twitter version, which is for Twitter, obviously. I really wish we had a standard because it's just duplicated nonsense, but I'm assuming that our egos are too big to accommodate for that. So if you're interested, I'll have a link to metatags.io in the video description in case you want to implement full previews into your website. This is probably a good way to do it. Uh, but what we're going to be doing today is we're going to be using a gem that allows us to do a lot of this meta tag stuff, including these previews, uh, a little bit more easily than you would expect. I mean, not really than you would expect because it's Rails. So you kind of just expect everything to magically happen. But to get started, we have to come over to this GitHub repo, which I'll have a link to in the video description. This is for meta-tags. This is the first thing that I'm going to warn you about. So we're going to install this gem. But I do want to point out that the gem does come with a little bit of issues uh, if you try to install it the way I did. So the actual gem is going to be a bundle add meta dash tags. Uh, make sure this is a dash and not an underscore. If it's an underscore, that's the wrong uh, that's the wrong gem. I just installed a completely different one. Uh, so make sure this is meta dash tags. Otherwise, you're going to have a really bad time. Uh, because the meta underscore tags gem, it seems like it's a deprecated version of it, which uh, means that it, it'll install and it'll use the same install command when you go to actually like configure it, uh, but nothing will work. So now that we've done that, we can now go ahead and run this rails g meta underscore tags colon install command. So I'll do that right now. Rails g meta underscore tags colon install. You can see why it's confusing because it's still using the meta underscore tags, but we'll run that. Okay, and now that that's run, uh, we're going to need something to test this on. So I'm just going to do a Rails G, let me full screen it again, scaffold post title body text. So we're just creating a post with a basic title of type string and a body of type text. We'll then go ahead and run a Rails DB colon migrate command. And now we can run a Rails S. And I'll go ahead and I'll minimize that. Let's come over to config routes.rb. Then let's do a root to the post controller index action just to give ourselves a home page. Once that's done, we can come over here and refresh. All right, one small coughing fit later, and I've come to understand that COVID has about a four minute attention span. Okay, so now that we have that set up, we can go ahead and we can actually do some of the configurations. So there's a couple things to note. The first is uh, the basic setup will have us add a couple things to our application.html.erb file. But the other part of it is if we come into config and initializers, there's now a meta tags initializer. So if we come in here and we full screen it with F11, you'll see that you have a couple options here, like what your maximum title limit is, what your description and keyword count limits are as well as what your keyword separator is. So by default, your keywords or your tags, for example, will be comma separated. Uh, you can also change stuff to be lowercase, minified. I mean, you guys can read, so I don't have to read this to you. But a lot of the stuff is pretty helpful. I'm a little bit curious. This seems like a very uh, Hearthstone specific example. I didn't realize that was an option. I'm not sure if I'm being trolled right now, but uh, if not, that's pretty cool. But whatever, we're going to leave the config for now because I don't really have anything to configure. And we're going to come into our app views layouts application.html.erb. Now, traditionally, you would come in here and change this to like, hello, I don't know, 
uh, let's just go with hello world i'm too sick to care and then if we refresh we can see that our title changed here which correlates to a change up here but you probably can't read that because my screen's made for ants i don't know um, so we're gonna be looking down here so the title changes here but with this gem we can actually come into the readme and we can shamelessly copy and paste some code if we get rid of this title bit we can set the site in here to uh, i don't know hello uh blizzard i i don't know why i said blizzard but i guess the cat's in here and the cat's named blizzard so there we go we can see hello blizzard uh is now appearing here because that's being declared in this uh, display meta tags bit well, what if we want to get a bit more specific? Well, we can come into our Explorer and we have two different options. We can set it application wide or we can set it page wide. Let's come into our controllers. Let's come into our uh, application controller and let's try to do something with a before action where we say uh, colon set tags. We'll come down here, we'll define set tags and then we'll just do um, set underscore meta underscore tags. We'll give the, the application a title. We'll give it a description and then we'll tab it over so we can read it. And then we'll give it some keywords and it looks like it's already going into the open graph stuff. So for now, I'm just going to leave it like this. I'll show you how to do the open graph stuff on a specific page in a minute. I just want to do this brief example for like an overall page, uh, what this looks like across the whole website. So now if we refresh, you'll see that we uh, have my app over here, which is the title set in our controller, as well as Hello Blizzard as the actual page title now. Where's that page title coming from? Well, again, that's in our application.html.erb file. Now, if we wanted to, we could come into our uh, individual controllers. So let's come into our post controller, and we could say in our index action, we want to do a set meta tags. And this isn't going to be the cleanest code, uh, so I do apologize for that. But I'm just trying to show you how this works. So in here, I'll just say this is the posts page. And then we can give this a description. And I'm going to tab it over as soon as it works. And then we can give it some keywords as well. We're not really going to see a lot of those, but uh, you can see here, when we set the title, we get hello blizzard, uh, pipe, and then the post page now. If we were to go to a different controller action, so now we're back in a controller action. This is the new action. It doesn't have the set meta tags in it. So now we're defaulting back to the my app, which is being set in the application controller. So you have a way to set this in multiple locations and then it gets pipe separated. So we have our site wide title and then we have our page title after that. But okay, let's take a look at how we would actually do an open graph preview. Now, uh, I'm not going to be covering images because uh, the way that I'm going to show you to do this, it's really involved if you're trying to do images. Um, but in general, images are just going to be either a link on your website uh, or a link hosted somewhere else. And then you can just test them like that. Uh, everything else will be testable similarly. So what we'll do is we'll come into the post controller and in here is where we'll, we'll do the other tags. So the first block you need is the OG block and then you need a Twitter block because these two companies have nothing better to do than to make us repeat our code. So the OG block needs a title, it needs a description, it needs a type, which is a website, which isn't technically correct because this is a web app. Uh, it needs a URL. It needs a image and it needs uh, a site name maybe. I don't know, my other set of code has a site name. So let me just put test in here and we'll just leave it like that. I don't know if this is true or not. Uh, it's just what I have in my other example. Uh, as for Twitter, we'll just like GitHub Copilot do the same thing. It's gonna have a card of type summary, a site that's called test. Um, if this would work, it needs a title, it needs a description, and then it needs a image. And I think that's pretty much it for the Twitter side of things. So if we come over here, or if we save this, and we come over here and we refresh, we should see all of these uh, meta tags appearing in our application somewhere. Of course, it would help if we were actually on the index page, wouldn't it? So if we come in here, we can see that we have the 
the open graph and the Twitter stuff. Now to actually test this, what we can do, you can go over to the Chrome store. There's a couple extensions. The one that I've been using is the local host open graph checker. So if I come over to Google and I go for a local host open graph checker, and I'll have a link to this in the video description as well. Uh, make sure you leave it a review because it is a very nice tool. Um, basically what this will do is it'll give you a temporary URL for a couple of minutes. You can then use this URL to test the application on Twitter and on Facebook. So I'll put it into the preview card and it'll tell us it couldn't find the uh, card to preview. That's fine though. It does tell us that it found the summary tag and that the card was loaded successfully with 20 meta tags. Uh, similarly, if we go over to the Facebook debugger and we try to paste in a URL and we click debug, we then click fetch new information. It'll then tell us that we, uh, we have the link preview here with our post page title, so that's good. And we have a URL a website, a post page, and a post page description. So it looks like it's working on Facebook as well. And then I'd assume if you put in an image and you had this actually hosted somewhere, it would uh, probably work just fine. So I'm gonna go ahead and erase this. So yeah, this tool is really useful. Um, you know, make sure if, if you're using it to at least go give it a review. I think there's also a buy me a coffee link on the actual uh, like extension page. So maybe consider donating because it's always nice to have tools like that. I'm sure it's not cheap to run a, a small server like that. So yeah, that's pretty much all I wanted to talk about. You now have a way to set all of your meta tags using the set meta tags uh, method here. And you have a way to set all of those options on any page you want through your controllers. You can also do it in your views if you so desire. Uh, and there's plenty of examples on the GitHub repo. Again, I'll have a link to this in the video description, uh, including stuff like no follows, uh, no archives, and you know the refresh interval and stuff like that. So there's a whole bunch of useful options here. It's obviously full featured meta solution. They also have some basics on SEO if you're interested. So it's sort of like a, a multi-purpose readme. So it's not like, you know, gonna be groundbreaking information, but it's trying to at least explain what the tags are for in a, in a uh, SEO sense. Now, my advice would be that SEO is important to an extent, uh, but you need to remember not to fall into the YouTuber trap of blaming the algorithm for everything, because at the end of the day, your target audience is people, it's not code. All the code's trying to do is show your stuff to people. So the more appealing it is to people, the better. It's just getting those initial, you know, 10 or 15 people to see it where you need the SEO. After that, it turns into more a game of just you know, being clickbait, if you want to call it that, but you just want to be engaging from start to finish. So you want people to look at your, your website and say, Oh, wow, that looks like an article I want to read. I need to read it right now. It's less important that you have keywords in your description so that you'll rank higher on Google. At least that's how I tend to handle things. But yeah, that's going to do it for me. Uh, hopefully this video was helpful. Hopefully I didn't drone on too much. I do apologize for my voice right now, but this is about all I can muster. So yeah, hopefully this was helpful and hopefully I'll see you in the next tutorial.